to the double bass side of things, how how is that featuring in your life at the moment? Is it something that you're spending a lot of time working on your playing in the way that you were previously, perhaps, or is it a different relationship with the bass at the moment? How's it's, that looking for you? It, it's always a different relationship with yeah. the bass. You know, since like I don't want to even say the word, but Corona times. <laughs> You know, so long on my own playing. It's been good. Yeah, actually, I've used it to yeah. practice. You know, I've practiced some things I've never had time to practice. So in that way, before that, I feel like I was doing a lot more playing outside. Of of course, like just yeah. playing gigs and uh, not so much studying. Yeah, it's given so, us all. But I constantly do studying. Like I, I don't think I'll ever be done with it. You know, I don't. So what kind of stuff are you working on then? What kind, I mean, is it? Are you kind of like all of us where you'll be exploring? different harmonies and scales and routes through improvisation? or Do you, so do you have a, a routine on what you're working on? Is it a specific is no, transcription? No, I'm, I'm chaotic. I'm super yeah. chaotic. Like, I'm, not, uh, I'm not one of those, you know, I know and admire a lot of bass players who are really routine with it. It's actually really inspiring hearing Larry talk yeah. about it because he was so also just super open. It wasn't like he was practicing vigorously some specific thing, which I do do sometimes, but not, of, not often for a long, long period, you know. So, uh, yeah, I've done a lot of studying things mm. in college and after. And Who are some of the but key... But now I work, like, I work on learning my own music. I try and... Push yourself that way. Yeah, learn it and play with it and see what's in. Do you kind of like, do you enjoy those challenges of work, working on yeah. The, yeah, like yeah. new yeah. sequences, new, new rhythms and, yeah, you know... Yeah, I do. I enjoy it. And uh, your use of rhythm is one of the things these... Uh, it's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was going to say one of the things I really think you should work on because it's uh, no, like you have these incredible, kidding, so. like you know, powerful uh, rhythmic uh, figures that are happening in the music, and so much of what you've done that I've heard, yeah, sure, you know, and I, I really feel that that's a kind of such a strong, a strong part of your identity as a as a bass player. Is is yeah. there a were there certain things that you worked on to develop that, or people that inspired you, uh, or so many? People yeah, maybe you could me. speak about rhythm for a moment. It's like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so many people inspired me with the rhythm. I think actually because I came from like listening, you know, when I was a teenager, I listened to, um, he played a Nirvana song, didn't he, Ben Williams? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I listened, that was in my thing, but like yeah. I, that, it wasn't my thing. And actually they're going to play some Tribe Called Quest tunes oh, yeah. later with Derek, yeah. I heard from uh, behind the... Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's what I listened to. I listened to a bunch of hip-hop when yeah. I was uh, yeah. a teenager. That's kind of my bag. Oh, it was, actually. Until one day I thought, this is too cynical. That just, mm. There's a lot of, sort of tension. Mm. Now I, I don't, you know, I couldn't relate to it no more. It was like, I'm in Denmark. It's like, this is like hardcore New York. And it's not your life. And actually I feel like that with some a lot of issues, you know, if they come from a place where that particular thing is the massive, like racism, for example, mm. you can't talk about that being the same thing in Denmark as it is in, Yeah, I'm saying it exists everywhere, absolutely. So hip hop, but hip hop has really been my thing. And I think from that, I was inspired by the rhythm and or thought with rhythm was like a massive, big ingredient in the music. Uh, were, there, were there many particular bass players that you were studying with that helped you develop your own voice that you feel that were particularly helped you, you know, helped you make real progress in your playing? I know that you will have worked You're putting with, me on the spot yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, you will have, I know that you will have studied with a lot of people, but maybe who comes to mind that really helped you on your journey? Oh, this is going to be, it, it, this might be even public, so I have to really think about my answer to this. Well, I know there'll be, I know there'll be many people that, Yeah, yeah. Of course, there's many people. I had some teachers at the academy who were great, um, and I also had a couple of teachers in Denmark who were super great. But like, I think like the most important teachers, it's what you, I think is what you listen to, mm. and what you transcribe, and what you get really into. You know, when you really get into it. So that's that's been definitely that's been the teacher. Yeah, I think. That's Actually, really cool. So, Grenadier, yeah, Avishai, Petucci, yeah. like those yeah. people are my my modern sort of guys. And yeah. then there's obviously a whole, you know. 
How about the Danish bass scene? It's not something I know huge amounts about. Well, you know I mean, about Nup. Yeah, of course, yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and you can imagine out of Nup, there's like another 100 Danish bass players who can play the, the shit out of the instrument. Right? Yeah, that le very, the legacy very high was yeah. just... It's a super high level there. Like, you know, in the UK, there's a lot of really amazing piano players because of John Taylor. Yes, absolutely. John Taylor's legacy. It just works like that in different scenes, you know? And uh, Nup is... Uh, he's done that. Do you ever get to play with John Taylor? No, I didn't. He did a workshop, or not a workshop, like a... He did a class. It was maybe a workshop, like a master yeah. class. Uh, and I played in that. I, and yeah. he was kind of walking around amongst everyone. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Mm. And if someone had it, you know, maybe someone played a solo or it was all bubbling. Yeah. He'd go like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he was so cool, but he had a really nice vibe. I really I, like I, him. I, I played with Leo, his son. Oh, wow. The drummer, he's a killing drummer. I don't know that. Fucking I know ridiculous. Parts. He plays with Adele and all this pop now. Oh, but, wow. But he's also played with David Kumo and Tom Skinner and all, uh, you know, they're both drummers. But <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. cool. So that's the London scene I, I learned about when I, when I was in London. Okay, so throwing it back to the room, do we have any other questions? No. Here we are. Do you, yeah, please go for it, sir. Uh, I'm wondering how... Uh, how uh, Develop, rhythmic development uh, you uh, developed in your style of music. So it's always about rhythmic vocabulary, why it sounds good. Sure. So how did you develop? How did I develop rhythm, ryth rhythmic language? Yeah. yeah. Um, man, it's a very big subject. <laughs> But uh, I, I went to the, I was, uh, somehow I made my way to the Royal Academy in London and I got accepted there. I tell you, it was just luck and I'm not joking. Like uh -huh. a person was meant to be that he skipped three months or oh, three weeks before the course started. My friends were like, hey, we know someone. It was literally, it was like, <laughs> I knew a couple of Danish people there who I really loved playing with, like very good friends of mine. So, but there I, uh, I was taught a lot of rhythmic stuff by a dude called Beric Schmuel, who's also taught Jacob Collier, for example. So it's, a lot of it is from there, I'd say. I'd even give him credit, but I was just interested always. Like, I, I've, I loved it. That's when it was exciting. Like, I really love uh, getting lost playing odd times, actually, <laughs> I can mm. say, <laughs> with all, uh, yeah. It's that getting comfortable with odd meters, isn't it, to go from? For me, it's always felt like more fresh to express myself in an odd meter. Yeah. Sounds like a really weird thing to say. I don't quite feel the same. Now, now it can be anything. Now it can be mm. odd, ordinary time signatures. Yeah, yeah. The way they say odd meters, you know, which yeah. also just nothing is odd. You know, you have yeah. very, very old music in all sorts of odd meters. But um, yeah, that's really a big uh, love of mine. That's excellent. Yeah. So is there anyone else in there? I've just glanced back. It's too bad the band has got really bad time. Ah, oh, yeah, that, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, please, please. So, uh, being a band leader, oh, what yeah. has been some of the things you've learned? Like booking flights mm. and uh, trains and stuff. You learn that? <laughs> um, no, whatever. Like many things. Yeah, many things. You have to just be nice. You you have to treat people. Hopefully, I do. Like I don't. <laughs> it's a pressure now. <laughs> um, you have to treat people like you want to be treated if you're in a band. So, and it's simple, it's super simple. You have to be caring and uh, thinking like, do I want to get up at six and fly somewhere? And you have to pay people decent or at least split what's there or just simple things really. But that's what I've learned generally. That, or that's at least the sort of things I'd pass on. Do you, th do you think playing your own music in a band and being a band leader has really helped you with your development as an artist, of finding your voice? That no, I think so. Big, you know, you're not just firing away no. standards. It's but I, I, I did a master class in Den Haag the other day in the conservatory, and I was saying to the guys, like, literally, I write songs based on things I can't play. Yeah. And I'm actually serious about that. Like, if there's a key I can't play, I'll write a song in it. If there's a meter I can't play, or feeling, or a certain type of thing. I'll try and I'll I'll write that. Yeah. And not everyone does that. I yeah. talk to Shy Maestro, not yeah. to like give him a clang, whatever. I'm a massive fan. I think he's so great. But 
about it, and he, he doesn't think about it like that, because mm. he's got no barriers. He's amazing. He's yeah. played piano since he was before he was born, or whatever it is. <laughs> like, it's like, it's <laughs> just a different thing, but I try and do that. So, uh, do you write on the bass? Or I do, do you... write some things on the bass, some yeah. things badly on piano, some things on... I'll take anything, you know, anything that comes. Yeah. I'll try and take it. Oh, that's really cool. I definitely can hear that that sort of development of you. Your, when I think about your sound and your approach to the bass, uh, you know, it's so tied in with your music as well. And I think sure. that's really key for an artist that's to great. be able to that's establish himself. So how about any other questions? I mean, we're kind of, oh, here we are. Yeah. Oh, this lady here. Would... Yeah, please. So, yeah, I came in late, so probably you already answered something like this. No, go ahead. Um, of course, I, I went to the concert and um, I was amazed by your style of music because it has some kind of freedom. I, I, well, that's why I feel in it. But then I was also amazed like... Are you from the Netherlands? Yes. I, I love people from here. Seriously. Yeah, it's They're so honest place. and just like totally... This is so great. Thank you. Okay. You don't know what the question is. You might be no, about to say, like, this you might so be about nice to say something to say really bad. Some that's freedom in the music. I mean, for me, that's like a compliment, massively. Yeah. But then I wanted, yeah, like, when you start a song, you play together, and I even saw you play the same melody with the saxophone and the drums. And then at some point you wander away, and then you come together again. So, but how do you keep track and how do you remember the music and how do you communicate to, to come together again at the end? Are you playing an instrument or are you? Yes, I play the bass. You play the bass too? Yeah. In a band or? Yes. In a jazzy improvised? So, I, I think we do it like this. It's kind of no, um, it's just like we do it in, uh, you play on a form a set of changes or a set of rhythmic structure. Either you just play round round or you play on a melody or you play free. Or, I mean, there's always all those options. So, but a lot of these things were like kind of just songs. So we played the structure of the song over and over again, like an old, like standards, really. So that, those structures are still valid for me. Yeah. Maybe it's for me also hard when I, I hear this music for the first time sure. to discover the structure that's behind it. Yeah, and also, but also we start with the, without the structure or just having the structure in mind mm -hmm. and then we play just little bits out of it and slowly it develops and more and more bits are added, like you're building a house or something. And in the end, the house is there and we play the melody and the song is over. So we try and use uh, those kind of uh, tools to... Um, so it's interesting, so it's uh, different, so it's not just like start, stop, which I love as well, there's nothing wrong with that, I'm not a snob, you know, a Stevie Wonder or whatever, like he starts the song, he stops the song, it's the best thing ever, but uh, it's fun playing like that, anyway, yeah, I don't know, is that a description? I don't yeah, I guess so, I, I would just, yeah. yeah. When I listen to you, I just wondered how do these guys do it, even how, how do you even remember this? music that sounds so free so yeah. yeah because i'm used to playing standards or in a big band and it's really structured yeah and so that's different sure yeah. i'll send you some charts okay. yeah totally if you want to see but it'd be really good if you yeah. remembered exactly what song but or what made you think that you know what i mean because then otherwise yeah. okay. we can talk after okay. yeah. that's great that's awesome any any more questions from the audience I see, you was the one just here to finish off, maybe? It might be a, a bit of a stupid question. No stupid questions. But I'm questions. really interested. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> since I studied classical and jazz, mm -hmm. and I'm really just wondering, first I have to make you, like, give you a compliment. It's like, I think, don't, yeah, don't. I will, I'm sorry, already. I think you have probably one of the most amazing like sounds in a double bass player what? I've ever heard. That's so sweet. I'm it's gonna buy a drink after this. It's yeah, I nice. heard it's two already now. Yeah. <laughs> I am ready <laughs> to receive. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But what I was trying to say is just it's a. I'm a very I'm very penal with intonation, so I listen to this extremely carefully. I did some weird today. I wasn't no, quite relaxed. No, the the thing it was in general it was just. Ex you're extremely precise, and you're ext like your sound is just so full, and it's amazing. And but I've worked with a lot of classical trained um, double bassists, and I've worked with a lot of jazz bassists, sure. double bassists. So I was just wondering, did you ever receive any classical training? Because no, it sounds so extremely classical to me sometimes. No, I didn't, <laughs> didn't receive any classical training. Damn. No. It's just, it's 
bass? I started playing electric bass when I was a teenager, and uh, you know, then I kind of learned the double. I, I never, no one ever told me this is half position. This is like this position. That was. I, I literally don't even know anything about those things. But with the bow, I see students and stuff, and they say like, "Oh, it's this position." I'm like, "Sorry, I don't really know that." <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to tell them it's really out. <laughs> when, but when you were at the academy, were people saying, "Oh, maybe go and take uh, some some lessons here"? No, we, there's no, there's know? no. The Guildhall has a, a bowing tradition, but mm. the academy doesn't. Mm. Actually, I recommended it even uh, to them now because I teach there, but it hasn't happened yet. Mm. It's definitely a good thing to do. Uh, but the bowing, I had one lesson with a German, the, actually a girl. I'm not going to mention names, but friend from the academy, his ex-girlfriend, when they were at college, they were dating. She went on to do the Munich uh, Philharmonic, uh, and she's incredible, and she's like this tall. And I, I got to her, I was playing in Munich in a club, I, I contacted her, hey, can I have a lesson, like whatever, what do you want to, do you want to meet up? So she met up with me, and I took the bass, and I was like, oh, so difficult, like this and that, I just started bowing. It's just, you know, whatever. And then she just took the bass, and she's, you know, this much smaller than me. Yeah. Leaned it towards her, like it was a kind of... And she just bowed the shit out of the bass. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's nothing to do with the tunes I have at all. Like, she had my bow, she was like... Yeah. That told me a lot, at that moment. I was like, okay, you got to put some more time in. <laughs> I think every jazz double bass is yeah. true. But the intonation, I've always been super, it's, it's still intonation, it's, it varies. I think it's a lot about how you stand, how relaxed you are with the instrument. Actually, when you're totally relaxed, everything is in flow and it's easy to play in tune. But when you're not, you are, of course it feels different because you're moving different, whatever. Yeah. So it's, it's that really, but I've always been really like, a lot of Scandinavian bass tradition maybe has a tendency to be vibrato and meh, meh. I've always been a bit like, oh, mm. I can't really do, I like it a lot more like. I hear the clarity in, in your playing is just. In the note, in on the beat. Is it on the beat? Okay, then it's on the, I don't know if Mark probably says I'm rushing or <laughs> dragging or something. <laughs> but uh, I like that, you know, the preciseness, the clarity. Yeah. So we're just going to wrap things up here, but do you have any kind of final words of advice for people who are interested in pursuing their own music, maybe putting aside the studio. Get that another job previously. next to it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. What got... am I going to say, man? It's yeah. hard, man. It's really it's hard a, now. It's not an easy path. <laughs> <laughs> say it again if you want. Sorry. Yeah, do you have any, any sort of parting words of advice for people kind of pursuing their own, really trying to find their own voice on the or, or as an artist, really? Just like uh, find some people you can do it with and uh, play as much as you can with yeah. people that you admire. I mean, that's really what I think everyone should do. Uh, and then, then maybe, yeah, that's the first thing. If it's about finding your own voice, and, but don't also be close to other things. And don't get put down by people saying, oh, you have to learn the tradition and stuff, because you know, there's so much knowledge and things to absorb that's been before you. Yeah. And I can't even imagine what it's like now for people starting now, you know? Yeah. Having you know, I listened to, well, Larry and Brad Meldow. That was like, the only ones playing Odd Times were like that trio and a couple of other things. Mm. And now they, they have to deal with a lot of things, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it must be also exciting coming up now, I think. I think it's a really incredible time. But yeah, yeah. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you to everyone at the theatre for helping us. This is the last of our sessions of the Talking Bass. It's our last event at the 2021 Dutch Double Bass Festival. So we really appreciate all the support we've had here. Hasn't it been an amazing event? Totally. It's, it's, been... it's very inspiring. I, say, I think it's such a good idea. Yeah. I it... have uh, an um, amazing amount of respect for James for setting it up. Absolutely. And thank you to everyone really for good. all of your questions, hanging out with us. Um, and yeah, please <laughs> join me in thanking for one last time. It's Jasper Hoiby. Come on! Yeah! Thank you guys. <laughs>